Alright, here we are, and welcome back to Shadows Over Loathing. I think we're finally going to take these mob guys on. And kick their butts. Um, or I could try and just make a deal. Hmm. Yeah, screw it, we're just going to fight them. I think I can handle them. Now, well, they killed my bird in one shot. But look, we got working grenades now. This. Bam. And then... Yep, do that orchestral strike. Boom. So, mob boss down, and then I still have... Another action. We've got 10 health. 19. I can maybe kill him. Right? Yeah, this... This has got good damage. Boom. Well, he'll he'll bleed out, I think. Yep, yep there he is. He didn't even did do any damage to us. And Gabby can just get a good slap on. Bam. Goon punch! Oh, no! No! Oh, they had to make it hard on me. Oh, shoot. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. We got a grenade. Bam! And then... Orchestra strike. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And then flip him. You know, it'll, it'll get him. Yeah. Nice. He shrugged at me? Are you serious, bro? Okay, that's it. <laughs> this glob of wet air. Here you go. Yeah. That's right. And then get leaf. Oh, no. No. Oh, it hardly hurt. Yeah. I made you weak. Ha! Alright. I don't know what happened to my stats, but... I think I'll just apply that bleed. That should do it. That should do it. Sweet. Dang, that was pretty impressive. I'll say. Time to go inside? These fridges are brand new and empty and thus quite boring. Sort bench doesn't seem big enough for refrigerators. Make some stuff. Nope, can't do that. To roll the control booth is locked from the inside, somebody's gonna be in big trouble. Why is this overhanging? Seems dangerous. Hey, can I come down there? Do I must I use the grain first? What's in here? Spray on him still. Oh, one oil. Anarchist's hardware. Um, well, it looks like I ought to get out here, I guess. Oh, we can fish. You carefully fish the useful chemicals out from the middle of all the dangerous ones you got in the miscellaneous chemicals. Okay. What's in this toolbox over here? More 11 and 1. There are weird flies buzzing around this. Yeah. Pretty flower. Probably a metaphor for something you don't understand. Oh. Huh. Okay. And miscellaneous stuff. Refrigeration coil. This factory's leaving cold. You can always leave. Um. Well, I don't know if I would quite leave yet. I kind of need to... I thought I was trying to get a box... Oh, thing. Oh, hide and watch. Oh. It's all there. All 40 cases. It's all gluck. You got the meat. Whoa. Mr. Point Dexter, what are you doing here? Surprise inspection. Oh, my God. Hmm. Curious. Oh, my God. What the heck? Oh. No time to check this out. You should go see what is going over on over yonder. There seems to be a bit of a standoff between the mob guys and the other ones. Cautiously approach. The scary top hat, the top hat nerd stares at you with barely any expression on his face apart from a faint sneer. It appears that we have an interloper, and you are... <laughs> Puddin' Dame? McMack Mavansky. What's wrong with your hat? I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. It's all spooky and, like, wrong. <laughs> Stars 
through. <laughs> yeah, just wrong. I have no time for this nonsense. Mr. Gluck. <laughs> Curious. <laughs> Regardless, please dispatch this interloper, Mr. Gluck. Uh-oh. <laughs> the top hat guy gives a taut nod, then leaves the same way he came in. In a horrible, weird spiral of negative space. The weird shadow monster that was once a person turns to you, to face you. Hello? 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 Hello! Wow, <laughs> wow. Shadows begin to gather all around him in ab abstract, menacing shapes. Hey, uh, hey, you mob guys, can I, can you give me a hand with this? Back away and look for another solution. What, like, box him in? Let's see if I can trap him, or, I don't know. Press the green. Press the red button. Oh. But oh, where's it going? Uh, there you go, yes. Uh huh, uh huh. That's the one. Uh huh. You're pretty sure the red button opens the jaws of the crane, that gluck guy. That thing. Well, he's right underneath it. You definitely want to press it? I do. No way I'm taking the heat for this. Let's skedaddle. Oh. Bye bye. There's very little left of this poor fellow. But there remains. There's the pocket watch. Get that? A bank pouch full of meat. And a deed to the speakeasy. A legal document regarding an illegal... What? I got the deed to the speakeasy? What? That's cool. And uh, now this has sinister magic all over the booze. Plug down. Experimental. Not for lunches. This cube maker, um, God, it doesn't seem relevant. Oh, I can fish in this, of course. Fishing in this man's remains would be in poor taste. Yeah, I see. I get it. You don't have to leave the building to open your map, by the way. You can just click the napkin up there, hit M, and head back to the street. Quickness! Ah, with the quickness, I see. Yeah, let's definitely head back before we maybe do some side exploration at this place. Hey guys, I got this like cursed watch. How's it going? Found the watch. It was complicated. I'd be some more. I'd be more surprised if you told me it was simple. Well, you know the drill. Strap it on and jump in the uncursing machine. It's a pocket watch. It doesn't. Just uncurse the thing. Get some sleep, okay? You look like you've been through the ringer. I won't dispute that. Yeah. Hey, it's Charles Wallace. It's good to see you. Uh, just uh, got a quiet morning. You bought the bookshelf. Real rare. Came from a 17th century cargo ship. The Must Flower. Ah, yeah. My ancestors are, are from that ship. Wow, that's quite a provenance for a bookshelf. Yeah, it was the ship's wheel. Captain brought the Must Flower out of dock. Couldn't steer. Drove into, drove into a starfish. Whole thing sank instantly. Yeah, that's a tragedy. Wow. There you go, kitty. Kitty, kitty. Alright, let's uncurse this thing. You sit in the chair, which is surprisingly comfortable, and pull the weird metal dome thing over your head. What would you like to uncurse today? Ba -da 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 -da. The watch. Uh, yup. It now resides with the machine. Yeah, let's do it. Project that consciousness. Hold on tight. Oh god. What just happened? Why am I a dinosaur? Eat Jessica? No. What? <laughs> Why is my to-do list to eat everybody? What? Check the. F Do I want to eat the phone? The cat? No. You still might fight fit inside this. Uh, well, you can eat the chessboard. <laughs> All right. Well, what if I open the door, huh? I don't know anything about this. I already I'm a dinosaur. Break it down, I'm a big dinosaur. Um, hmm, if you slap your prehistoric tummy up against the wood, but it doesn't even make a dent, maybe that's why the dinosaurs went extinct. Couldn't open doors. Roar! Oh, I literally said it. Uh, we need some dexterity. We need lots of dexterity. 
To open the drawer, I need three. Two drawers are three. Muscle, open. Pet the cat. Oh, oh, did knock the chair over. Yeah, screw chairs. Arr. Mac Mac. Oh, what am I best behaving? Wait, I shouldn't I? I thought I had three dexterity. No, I have two now? What can I do with two dexterity? Yeah, me. What, what, where's, where's, where's the third? What's next for me? The table? The cat, the rug, the door. Uh, uh, machine. Do I have an inventory? No, character sheet, no. Unstitch the rug for 200. Oh, wait, the rug? No. Phone. Can I eat? What would eating the phone accomplish? Probably accomplish three dexterity. Let's eat it. Screw it. Who needs a phone, right? Okay, I was maybe a little bit wrong about that. But I don't think we ruined it, right? What am I supposed to do? Time? Messages. I gotta open the drawer, but why can't I open the drawer? Eat the chessboard. Chomp chomp. Maybe I just gotta eat my way out of it? Is that... Seems really bad. I mean... I, I, it's not gonna... Right? Oh god. I don't wanna... I don't wanna eat them. Do I have to sacrifice one of them? I don't like Gab. No, Gabby's cool. She's on her team. Wait, Wallace? Grok! Hey, easy does it, baby. We're all hungry. Can you open the door for me? Oh. Is that credit garbled? Please help. I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about the cat? I scared the cat. Oh, is that what I needed? Hey. Oh, God. Being a dinosaur sucks. Get me out of the dinosaur land. Oh, I can flip the table now. Yes! That was all we needed. Now we can gain the dexterities. It took way too long. Rawr! Rawr! I can almost read the book. Wait, what's next now? I want to... Can I still pet cat? Kitty, I'm sorry. Did I ruin everything? Am I doomed? Can we use doors for me? <laughs> Schmurderer. Here, sir. Hmm. Norgabor. Yeah. Um. Oh, God. Hey, Gabby. Whoa there, hoss. What? <laughs> What's got you all horns and rattles? Been dipping into the nose pain again? Gabby yeah, doesn't talk like that. Urgwar! Sure is, partner. Sure is. <laughs> Gabby, I'm a dinosaur. Ar oof. Whoopa wee. <laughs> Whoopa pee -wopa. I'm the quickest draw in the West. Sure enough. Ar. You open the door for me? No, <laughs> gagar! I don't know. Never had a head for puzzles, Mig Mac. That's got me. Right funkified. What the hell? Sayonara, hoss. <laughs> what is happening? Get me out of here. Eat the table. Ah, oh, of course. It's got to be eating the table. Or not. Please. Hey, Kenny. I'm going to pet you. Oh, God. No. How do I get out of escape? Jessica, I may have failed. Oh, maybe I gotta leave and the cat can reset or some stuff resets? I don't know. Oh, Jesus. Get back in there. Get in there, tiger. Does it start over? No. Does the cat re... Did I have a second, uh, an option there for a second? Oh, no. Okay. We're gonna, we're gonna really click fast. Nope, I don't know. I don't know. Kitty! I, I messed up, I'm sorry. Oh 
god. I'm gonna have to maybe skip forward and figure things out. Can I open the desk? Real groovy pocket watch you got there, Micmac. I like the way it tick, tick, ticks. You understand me? Yes. Roar! A lot of power in that timepiece. A lot of power. Would you make a promise to me, baby? Would you promise me not to throw that power away? A lot of good can be done with that groovy power, baby. Charles doesn't call me, baby. Ah, oh, roar. I hear you, kitty cat. <laughs> what do you say, kitty cat? Will you do me a promise? Promise not to throw away the groovy power in that timepiece. Yeah, let's do it, man. Oh my god, I can shake pants. That's what we need to do this whole time. I literally slap my own head. Shake hands. Okay. Now we have the dexterity. What was next? Uh, the, 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 yeah, the books. Gotta learn. We gotta read the paper. Gather the knowledge. Understand the to-do list. I'm writing help on the chalkboard. Oh, I still want to eat the cat, maybe? That's understandable. So I need dexterity and muscle. I must already have the muscle. Um, yeah, I think I can sign my name now, right? Yeah. Uh, you scrawl an uneasy line. I'm much obliged, Big Mac, and I hope from now that I sleep is all the more sweet for sleep. Take a leap. So now I can open this door. <gasps> Mr. Time. Hi, I'm a dinosaur. So we meet at last. With I looking the older man, though you are far older than I shall ever be. I'm not old. You're the Alpha and the Omega. You, beginning of time, and I, its end. Will you walk with me, dear friend, to watch the death of our world and the birth of another? I'm just trying to uncurse pocket watch, pal. Roar. Oh God, are we free? <gasps> Freedom! Tick, tick, tick. The hands of the uncursed pocket watch beats on boats with the current born correctly into the future. You pull the pocket watch out and look at it. It's gained some luster. The curse lifted time into its rightful home, and you no longer have a tail. Now that it's free of the, ener the tainted uh, shadow energy, it's just a boring regular watch. If you think about it, though, being on time for things is kind of like a magic power. It reduces an enemy's muscle, mysticality, and moxie by five once per fight. I wish I had a tail. <laughs> Me too, sometimes. <laughs> um, so in what now? Wait, this says it goes nowhere? I didn't remember that. Oh yeah, it's just the brick wall behind it. Alright. Um, Jessica. She always looks busy. That letter from Uncle Moray was a real surprise. I didn't read it. What did it actually say? Basically, just asked if I could come visit him because he needed to help with something big and he knew I had an adventuresome spirit. Haha, <laughs> adventuresome spirit? Yeah, that's Murray, all right. I haven't seen him in ages. I mean, I only ever saw him at Crimbo. <laughs> What's Crimbo? <laughs> at holiday? Sometimes he came with us when, he, when we went camping in the summer, but after I moved out to go to college, we kind of lost touch except for birthday cards. But you dropped everything to come see him? I wasn't carrying anything of value. To see Uncle Murray again? Of course. Does he Does he still do that trick where he pulls five meat out of your ear? What? Ew. Yeah, it was super gross. I loved it when I was ten. Well, I bet he'll do it for you if you ask him. If you can find him. Yeah, here's hoping. How's uh, helping finding Murray? Hey, Jessica, not to dispute the importance of collecting the weird artifacts and everything, but I'm worried about my Uncle Murray. How is this helping me find him? Oh, I guess I didn't really explain that. See, the Detectatron 1000 is new. We only really got it running after Murray disappeared. He always searched out artifacts in more hands-on ways. Research, networking, following rumors, that kind of thing. That last artifact he went after could basically be anywhere. But the Detectatron only detects the nearest artifact. I see. So you figure if we pick them in a different order, eventually we'll get the one that he was looking for? Right. Well, I I wish to hell he'd left a note about where he was going, but I guess he either thought it was too dangerous and didn't want to follow him along, or he just rushed off all excited like a kid in a toy store. That's Murray for you. Yeah, that tracks. Um, so what? Am I going to bed now? Well, I guess I should talk to Fancy Dan. 
about the speakeasy deed before you go to sleep. Yeah, that seems pretty important. I also got... Oh, did I, did I investigate these? Nestled among the books and papers is a book of old but still valid poster stamps with a few missing. They're surrounded with a haze of weird shadowy energy, but you can still clearly see the illusions of cute dogs on them. Wait a minute, cute dogs? That's just like the stamp that survived your luggage fire. Oh dang, of course, that stamp is what destroyed your luggage. All your, be all your best stuff was in there. Your clothes, your teddy bear, that tears it. This shadow business has become personal. I mean, it was personal already because of Murray being your uncle and all, but now it's extra personal. Grr! What's up? These stamps! These stamps have shadow gunk on them, and one of them killed my luggage. Oh my gosh. I guess that wasn't my fault. I ran out of stamps and found those inside Murray's desk. I didn't even think to test them. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's not your fault. It's whatever is causing this damn shadow stuff. I'm definitely going to have to put a stop to this. But wait, how many of these stamps have you used? Just the one, thankfully. The rest must have already been gone when Murray found them. Well, that's good news, at least. Yeah. Um, let's go about our activities. In the crazy fashion that we do. You know? Oh, wait. Do I know how to get in the bank now? Got enough stats. Uh, no. That's a no. Not even close. What is this place? Yeah, thanks for candy, candy. Yeah, we go away. We're hobo. We need a lot of hobo code knowledge to get in here. Is this a hobo church? Hello. It's a vicar who seems agitated about something. Hello there. Oh no, oh no. What am I going to do? I was going to ask if everything's okay, but plainly not. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you there. Services are cancelled for the moment. Oh no, you don't need any help? One of the urns has been stolen from our catacombs. Stolen? This tiny cathedral has a catacombs? Well, it sounds nicer than basement. Are they particularly important ashes? Oh my goodness, we wouldn't keep the relics of a saint in a little cathedral like this. Our urns are just the ashes of former vicars and community leaders and so on. But they're all important in their own way, and the bishop is due to arrive for an inspection soon. Funny how bishops always seem to be just able to arrive for an inspection somewhere. What? I'll look into it for you. Oh, thank you so much. Here, I'll unlock the door so you can have a look. Mind you step on the way down? Please, those stairs are old and deep. All right. Please don't disturb the altar. All right, uh, we, oh, let's just fish. Right here, perfect. Right in this basin. You caught something, handful of holy water. Probably shouldn't tempt fate anymore today. Deal a lot of damage to especially evil enemies. Yeah, I would hope, I would hope, I mean, you know? Wait, this is that one jingle, duh, duh, da, da, da. <laughs> I just realized what the song is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, what have I done? There's something unsettling about this book of Himes. Maybe it's the fact that every instance of the word God has been replaced with some kind of weird shifting ink blot thing. Crack it open and deal your muscle in spooky damage once per fight. Whoa. Okay. Here we go, down into the catacombs. I didn't want to do that. The catacombs. There's one candle left unlit. Hopefully the, uh, this doesn't preclude your cursing the darkness later if you feel like it. Ah. Ah, yes. The last three visitors were Dog Hufferby visiting from huh, Saskatoon. That seems like a dead end. And they sure have some weird names up in Canada. Yeah. Charles Wallace. Wait. Oh, hey, he's visited? Huh, that's the address of the antique store. You'll have to ask Charles about the next time, about, the, about that the next time you see him. Captain August Dirch, 23 Kerwin Avenue. This one might be worth following up on. Ah. I'm going to sign the book. And then uh, my address. As white as snow. <laughs> uh, yes, we just got to go check that out. 
No, not yet. Please hurry. I think I know where I must look, sir. I know where I must look and who may have such ashes. Why he has it, I have no idea. As you're walking past one of Ocean City's many disused public urinals, you notice that one has been filled up with ice cubes. As you investigate further for some reason, you notice that one of them isn't an ice cube at all, but a frozen rock. Ah, yes, I'm a uh, psycho -ge geologist, so. You wipe the rock off, examine it, and then pound it into flakes. You get an item, frosty flakes. Oh, sick, dude. I can make a cereal or something out of those. Oh, dude, that would be a mad genius idea. Why is this steaming? This rock is steaming. Yeah. Comforting. You reassure the rock that everything is going to be okay, and it slows off some of its rage. Duly noted. Feel better. Wait, did it say knock? And on the door, I'm hoping. Huh, what? What is it? Uh, I'm selling these fine leather jackets. I'm from the Municipal Census Bureau. I'm the milkman. Got your milk. Oh, yeah, we had milkmen. Congratulations, you wanted to... Got your milk. I ain't drink that fart water. Get lost. Oh, shit. Um, from Municipal Census Bureau. There's nobody here but me and these four urns snore. Urns? Circ five. Five urns. Go away. I'm selling these fine leather jackets. Don't want any. Buzz off. Congratulations, you want to sweepstakes. Fat chance never won nothing, didn't. Snore. Hello? The net to no sweepstakes, no house scram. Okay, well, how do I get your attention? How do I get... This rock has a date painted on it. 11-10-82. Jotting it down. Okay, got it. It's very important. Psycho geology stuff. You gotta understand. Amble away? Why? Oh. That's the kind of ambling away. No, you don't. Wait, wait, who are you? Hands in the air, bucko! You're on tin lizzy turf, and this is a stick up. You turn me. You turn to see a woman in oil stained coveralls pointing a gun like tool in your direction. What the? Is that a cockling gun? Stick up isn't usually such a literal phrase. Actually, it's a grease gun, so I guess it's more like a slick up. Haha. <laughs> Gross. Everybody's a critic. Give me a wallet. Grab her gun. Looks. Hey, looks like the grease is on the other, um, lug nut? Honestly, I don't know anything about cars. You're gonna regret messing with the tin, Lizzie's. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm gonna regret touching this filthy grease gun more. Go on, scram. You got an item. Tin Lizzie grease gun. Nice and smooth. Alright, go to the... Go back here. Is there anything else around your property, sir? I guess not. What is this date gonna do for me? I guess we're done here, but he's got the urns. I can't get the urns yet. I guess let's visit the Ho Hobo Eerie Music House. <gasps> Go investigate. Zimmer's house. It seems like a pretty normal house in a pretty nice neighborhood, but there's something odd about it. Some sort of uncomfortable energy that makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up. Maybe it's something to do with that weird droning tone you hear coming from inside. Like a pained and human moan constantly rising in pitch. Maybe that's it, yeah. Oh yeah, that's pretty creepy. Oh god, it got louder. You knock, but here, no response. So he knows your way inside. That eerie sound is even louder in here. It seems to be coming from upstairs. Also, the owner's interior design sensibilities are a little odd. Strange. No, that's not strange. Dude, treble clefts everywhere. Nice. A bunch of books about music theory. Here's hey, there's one about jazz. I'm a jazz and he's intermediate jazz theory. You've learned that while jazz is often about the notes you don't play, it's also important to play some notes. Plus one to range weapon attacks. Nice. Day stand. Noon time was a long time ago. There's nothing left here but stands. Okay, okay. Cabinet full of bag of plates. Shelf full of trophies from music competitions. Uh... Cabinet full of sheet music, example of pieces. You pull out a sheet, but it's all in German. Alright. What's going on upstairs? Who's playing the cello? Or bass? Cello? Hi. A tired looking man is playing a cello here. Talk to him. What? Who are you? 
Why are you in my house? Sorry for intruding, but I heard the music, and I guess I have an intrusive nature. My name is Big Mac Mamansky. Well, I'm Ernest Zimmer. Forgive me for not stopping, but it's vital that I continue playing. What are you doing? There's a darkness beneath my house. Did you check the fuse box? No, I... It's probably that, then. Listen to me. I had a dream, a premonition of a dark rift appearing in my basement and growing until it swallowed the entire house, and then the neighborhood, and then the world. Whoa, that's quite a dream. It was not just a dream. I went downstairs to check the basement, and there is indeed a rift. As of now, it is still small. I must keep playing this cello to prevent it from growing any larger. I was playing cello help. The bass vibration reverberates downward and is focused by the circle of furniture downstairs. This resonance inhibits the rift. Huh? I don't really get it, but okay, are you a physicist or something? Are you a physicist or something? No, I'm only a cellist. I cannot explain how I knew this would work. Hmm, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you mind if I have a look at this rift? Very well. I cannot blame you for wanting to see it with your own eyes. You'll have to reach into my pocket and take the key to the basement for yourself, as I require both hands to play. Ah, well, okay. You got an item. Zimmerman basement key. He gave you this key so you can inspect the, ba the dark rift. Possibly unwise, but when you has that ever stopped you? Please do not get close to the rift. Alright. Uh, uh. Um, what was it you said you were doing again? Listen, we had a dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I'm sure there's a rational explanation. Well, plus I'm pretty sure you're... Wait, I'm sure there's a rational explanation, probably just to trigger the light, plus your anxiety. Well, probably right. Just an old man, just somebody in his phone. That was the best of us. Don't worry, everything's fine. Uh, I don't know if you should have stopped playing, necessarily. I'm sure it's fine, though, you know. Maybe convincing Zimmer to stop playing the cello wasn't such a good idea after all. Oh, no. Every one of these moldering books is titled Blood. Day stand has become a nightstand. Chair is frighteningly non right side up. This chair seems to have a hard time remaining stationary. It appears that two ghosts are playing a very spirited game of chess. Fish? You got an Eldritch Mist. Yikes! Um, chair's barely there. Moths are eating this. Uh, the chair's whispering. What? Sit in me. Uh, no! Please, McMack, sit in me. No way! Sit in me! Fine, I'll sit in you. Sit in the chair for a few minutes and nothing bad happens. Apparently it was all barking and no bite. Just as well. Chair isn't speaking to you ever again. <laughs> oh, it's a cabinet full of sheet music. It's one of the pieces. You pull out a sheet. It's a piece of it entitled All Arbit and No Spiel Makes Ernest a Dull Boy. It's very sad. A shelf full of trophies from murder competitions. Oh my god. This is hell now. Oh jeez. That sure is a dark rift in space over there, just like Zimmer was afraid of. Well, nuts. It's a big hole in, well, in here. Step through? Uh, really? Uh, maybe not yet? I guess I'm gonna let him know that he should replay the cello. I don't know. Hello. <laughs> Hi, I've bad news. <laughs> what? What do you mean? Remember I said everything was fine? I do remember that, yes. Yeah. So you tell me that you were incorrect. Let's just say that your house is incredibly haunted now. Ah, I should not have trusted you. We're both fools. Did the rift open? Um, yeah. No, no, what are we gonna do? Don't worry, I'll, I'll think of something. Well, if you were me, you'd leave, because that's what I'm doing. Don't worry, I'll think of something. Okay, we're gonna fix this. We're gonna fix it. I'm gonna get in there, fix it all up. I'm sure it's inside there. It's gonna be okay, buddy. Mr. Zimmer. I got it. Yep, we're going in. You find yourself in an infinite black void. Well, it looks like an infinite black void, but you have the uneasy feeling that your brain is only showing you an infinite black void because it doesn't want to try and process what this place actually looks like. It's a weird feeling. 
Yeah, oh god, why is there a Demogorgon? Come and spray the big, big energy? Damp it, why am I dampening? Pluck? Pluck it? Oh. Oh, do I have to, like... <gasps> there's music on the walls, right? And there's these symbols, right? Maybe? Or something. I think we gotta copy this. Whatever this is. Okay, so we got... We'll do the first three-ish notes, I guess? What are those? What are the notes? What are the notes? There are scribblings, right? On the walls? I don't know if that's accurate, but we gotta try. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's too complicated. I mean, or we could just mess around till it's fixed. Uh, that's how things sometimes work. I don't know. Mr. Demogorgon Man. Hey. He's built more or less like a large, muscular person if you built a large, muscular person out of some kind of writhing black ooze and or smoke and or just plain raw darkness. And his fist-sized glowing crystal embedded in his chest. Creature sh Yeah, it just looks really powerful. Let's <laughs> gonna size it up. Oh. I'm gonna size it up. Creature looks like it could rip you in half without even really trying. Maybe without really even noticing anything. How do I get 11 muscle? It's gotta be getting that. But how do I? Do I have a character sheet in here? No. Oh, I'm trying to find the perfect frequency. It only takes six muscle now. Interesting. Hey, how are you doing? Nope, that's not it. We're getting warmer. Maybe we gotta turn this. We're gonna turn this one off. How's that? You like to be on? No, you don't like being on. Do you like being off? Hey, you don't like being off. Okay, what about you? You like being on? Hey, hey. Ah, you like being off. What about you? Like being on? Yes, I can pry out the crystal now. Make a quick grab for the crystal, but it's firmly lodged in the creature's chest. The creature howls and its long, spindly arms flail ineffectively at you. Or, whatever. Uh, uh, okay, we got the crystal. Nice. Somebody tells you that this crystal is very important, as well as it being really shiny and pretty. Nice. Let's take it. Let's go get it. It occurs to you that taking that weird crystal out of here might be a bad idea. On the other hand, it's yours now, and you prefer to keep it. Okay. Smash it. You pull out a hammer. You pull out a hammer from your inventory. If you don't actually have a hammer, whatever object be the most hammer adjacent and give the crystal a solid thwack it makes a sound like a baby being torn in half and burst into glittering shards that shoot off into the darkness immediately you feel well i was gonna say a massive earthquake but since you aren't standing on the ground you don't feel that it's more of an everything quake you should probably get out of here uh oh you dive back through the rift just before it collapses vanishes slash heals thankfully you find yourself back in ernest zimmer's basement and not some kind of horrible between dimensions purgatory you run up the stairs to tell ernest the good news Whew. Hey, man. Hello. I fixed it. I closed the rift. You did? That's wonderful. I owe you my life. And probably also my house's life. Here, take this cello. I have no further need of it. And to be quite frank with you, the thought of playing it ever again only pains me. I got Zimmer's cello. I mean, I was a violist, but I'll accept your cello. And I will try, as I did play cello for a few weeks in the summer camp. And I shall honor your weapon, even if it does not make sense for me to do so. And must mean I must level up some muscle. As my bleed damage build was very good, but now we are switching character. First of all, first of all, to be a cellist, we need to be stylish. And thus, we must rewear our cursed fedora. That also means that, um, where is it? The ring. Ah, the jaggy ring, yes. I think maybe we want some more salesmen, or we need the combat shield. Kind of like the combat shield idea. 
Or we could just pretend that we went to SIT. But yeah, we'll bring the, the ring of repulsion. Sounds good. And I like how I also... All the dishes are unbroken. Yay, the plates. Is this, is this like... Downstairs? All good now? Can I examine back here now? <gasps> There's a pool of some thick black tar-like substance. Where did it come from? Investigate. The only thing that... Nearby is a shelf of old basement junk. Bottom shelf. Nothing. Jam jars. Nothing. Write your name in the dust. Congratulations on expressing your creativity in a way that nobody will ever know. Except for you. You'll know. <laughs> Check the third shelf. This shelf has a box labeled things. It's full of little screws, rubber bands, stuff like that. Looks like when Zimmer's kitchen junk drawers gets too full, he just dumps it in here. Since you're already looking... Uh, you sift through it for a second and find a fuse that still looks good. Zimmer probably won't mind, or ever even know, if you pocket it. Oh, well, I got the fuse. Um, the top shelf has a few old tins, a uh, big bucket of tar as you watch the drip. Ah, okay. Mystery solved. Yep. That's why. Let's fish in it, of course. What's in there? Gob of tar. Yep. Makes sense. Just Take some of that with me. Would be a great idea. Box of old sheet music. Okay, that's it. So I guess I'm gonna be a cello player now. Um, and also, you know what? I'm getting tired of walking like that. Let's uh, let's put on the sandals. Sandals again. <laughs> All right, now let's get heading out. We've saved a man. We saved a house. Now I think it's time to go to, well, uh, yeah, the speakeasy on Plunkett Street. Let's get going. Oh, wait. Actually, I want to go to Hobo Camp, and somebody's bothering me. There's a cool guy wearing some sunglasses strutting. I would love some sunglasses if I could get, get them. I see you dig the shades. You got good taste. I, what the what? You like my sunglasses? Oh, gotcha. Yeah, I do. <gasps> Yay! I can buy them! Buying! Looking good, baby. Nice doing business with you. No, go to the... I want to go to the Kobo camp. I want to see if there's anything new there. Because I'm now really cool. Um, Yeah. So the reporter's cufflinks was giving me mysticality, but now we can get some moxie in here. Yeah, look at that. Oh, yes! This is what, this is what jazz agents should look like. All right, uh, we're going to go go to the... Oh, 420, by the way. Um, we're gonna go to the speakeasy over here. Pretty sure it was not in there. Uh, though actually, I know more stuff. Hold up. Um. Okay, so we, do we have anything from this type here? No, no. Uh, and through here, no. Uh, nope. Um, uh, nope. Uh, is this the date that was on the rock? What date would you like to look to? November 10th, 1882. The cover story for that date is the sinking of the Porkwood, a whaling vessel that operated off the coast of Ocean City. The story says that the wreck had only one survivor, Captain Augustus Dirch. Wait, wasn't he... Didn't he sign his name? Yo, what? He signed his name on the, uh, the church thing, right? Whoa. Despite his best efforts to go down with the ship, he was rescued and transported to shore by a friendly otter. You really started to enjoy doing this kind of research. You got a perk. News hound. You've got a nose for old news, and you're always sniffing. Ah. You gain extra XP for learning new things from the newspaper archive. How simultaneously tragic and adorable. These are, I've already read these. I think. He will say new. If it's new, I would hope. Okay. Anything here? Ah, yes, it does say new. Yep. November 13th, 1922. This morning, a new sculpture was revealed in Goldthwaite Park, donated by Ocean City Con Comptroller Margaret Smut. Uh, Margaret. The sculpture, which consists of five jagged pointed rocks arranged in a rough circle on small concrete plinths, has been variously described as Advent Guard, thrillingly pointy, and fine, I guess. Wait, are you writing this down? Hi, Mom. By interested onlookers. By interested onlookers. Okay, then. Alright, uh, very interesting. Very glad I, uh,. Check that out. Uh, oh, hey, hey, the Kobo, I need to... Yeah, this is why I gotta go check out the hobos. 
I will go back there. But wait, was the speakeasy its own building? I thought it was in the on the street here. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I must look harder first. I could also spend some money at the Cold War store. Hello. What you got? Um What do these rations do? Bad for you, despite what the radio Oh, they're cigarettes. Yeah, no, I don't want to smoke, man. Uh, expired seltzer. Put people out. This can give me some sleaze armor temporarily, so I'll, I'll do that. Or buy those. Um, and small ink salts might give me some AP, so... Yeah, I think we're looking good. Let's head... Let's find... Let's find the speakeasy. So I guess it's not on this street. Okay, well... All oh, right, we can just hit M. Uh, speakeasy, speakeasy, speakeasy. Is it here? No, no, here it's not Hiram's, is it? Boosters. No, it was in the alleyway. But anyway, no, okay, I remember. It's definitely in the alleyway on the Plunkett Street. But uh, we'll go to Hobo Camp first. Around a street corner, encounter a woman in a welding mask. Um, okay. Uh, is this your car? Uh. Yes. No, it ain't. And it ain't your business, neither. So maybe we should teach you a little lesson about minding your business. You said it isn't mine. Bamboozler. Listen, you gals are gonna be going about this all wrong. You'll get much more usable parts off this jalopy if you take it back to your garage first, instead of trying to strip it quick and dirty on the street before a cop shows up. Huh? Um, well, yeah, we usually do, but <laughs> Hotwire Nancy's visiting her ma today. Good thing you got me, then. You two go on ahead and get your tools ready, and I'll get the car there for you. You what? Are you gonna do what? You? What are you gonna do about it? it? Just so happens I know a guy. You give her a wink and shoot her the old finger guns. It, <laughs> huh? Well, yeah. If you play your cards right, maybe you could know that guy too. All it takes is a phone call. The two. Uh, all right, we'll go unlock the garage door. Don't take all day. Shots you the wrench, and the two of them head off down the street. You get an item, tin. Lizzie Grease Gun. Oh. Interesting. Suckers. <laughs> Thanks for the Grease Gun. You got anything new? What do you know about the Hobo Code, man? Uh, here, this one's on me. Arpeggio. These two pointy ones are crescendo and decrescendo. Decrescendo. This one here is a treble clef. Thanks. Oh, code knowledge increased. That's about something else. Right, um... So now we know Hobo Code Level 2. We might be able to read the writings in the street. Anything new around here? Well, were you able to find any work? No, that's just pressure bumble. That's a shame. Yeah, just gumbled them. Right, yeah, don't let it get you down. Hmm. How's the camp treating you? Mmm, schlernum. Good bumble. My bumble. Yeah, it seems nice. Everyone's real friendly. Mmm, bumble. Mmm, bumble. That's great. Community's real important. Oh, mmm. Mmm. Definitely better than standing on an abandoned street corner. Oh, mmm. Hey, some, some, some bumble. I don't suppose there's any chance of a punchline where you suddenly say something really elaborate and completely understandable, is there? Mmm, the bumble. Some, the bumble. Mmm. Yeah, just checking. Do you have any hobo codes to share? Hmm, sure. He fishes an old store receipt out of his pocket and draws some very small symbols for you to squint at. Hobo code knowledge increased. Oh, thanks. Hey, see you later. Wow, I'm getting a hobo code. Hey, Gus. Can you teach me some hobo code? Ah, you're a student of letters and of letters. I'll be glad to help. He reaches... He searches into his pocket for a dry piece of paper, but can't find it, so he scratches some glyphs into the dirt with a stick. Ah, uh, thanks. Bye-bye. Hey. Can you teach me any homebo code? Certainly, dear. In fact, I think I still have my notes from when I was learning it myself. <laughs> thanks. Um, King. Sir, King Hobo. King of the Hobos. Letter said you're working on some kind of secret plan. Oh, did he? He wouldn't say what it was, though. 
Certainly not, that information is mine alone to divulge. So will you divulge? Are you practically... Well, you are practically a stranger here. I apologize, but I cannot jeopardize operational security. Shucks. Can you teach me hobo code? <gasps> ah, yes, according to hobo code... All right, according to the hobo hobo code code, I am, of course, obligated to assist. But first, let me test you. Convince me of your worthiness, and I will grant you a boon. Bamboozle and three moxie. You know, to be honest, it doesn't matter. I already know all the hobo code. In fact, I should be testing you. Oh, really? Okay, hotshot, go ahead. What's the symbol for a public bathroom? Oh, that's a simple one. It's, hey, you won't scam me that easy. You're trying to get me to tell you. It's a rectangle with a crescent moon in it, so you, you can pretend you knew all along. Well, shucks, you got me. I guess you better ask me instead. Ha! So, ha! So what is this symbol for a public bathroom, then? Hmm. I think it's a rectangle with a crescent moon. Huh. Well, you got it right, so I guess you learned a boon. Great. King Johnny takes out a small notebook, writes a glyph on it, and hands you the page. What's this? This is the hobo code symbol for boon. One of my favorite jokes. I wish I got to use it more often. Thanks, man. Alright, um, so now we got lots of hobo code knowledge. Pretty useful. Maybe, uh, letters might know some? No, he doesn't. Or he already taught me and I forgot about it. Oh, yeah, the rack guy. Washboard guy. Hey, McMac, how's it going? Hey, uh, do you know any hobo code you can teach me? Sure, I know the word washboard and uh, some words that kind of describe the sounds a washboard makes, but they aren't really useful as actual words. He teaches them to you anyway. Thanks! Sweet. It's that oboe hobo from the park. Talk to him. Well, hey there, friend. How's life treating you? Oh, I'm doing all right. Say, I never got your name. Oh, I'm Obi. Pleased to meet you. Likewise, Obi. I'm Mig Mac. How's the camp? Well, it's fine. Most fellas... Most of the fellas out here, out here have uh, all kinds of stories about their travels. It occurs to me that maybe I ain't done enough of that. Feeling a wanderlust? Well, now, maybe I wouldn't quite put it that strong, but let's say a wanderthirst. You want to tag along with me? <gasps> Obi! 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 Are we heading out now? Now's a good time as any. Hey, Gabby, mind waiting for me at Oliver's place? Okay, you have it. All right, let's hit it. Let's hit it. Oh my god. Obi, let's do it. I'm so happy. I couldn't be happier to have Obi as a friend. How do I leave? Oh, uh, probably just the map, but I'll ride the rails back to town. Now let's get down to the... To the... Wait, no, we got some hobo code to investigate, maybe. Two goblins wearing shorts with suspenders come up to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi, hello. Uh, hi, what's up? You are trudin' on the territory of the Glockens. Am I? I don't know what a Glocken is. Via Glockens, we both. Via the toughest of all street gangs in Ocean City. That think you about it. Sure, I guess. You do look pretty tough. That's true. We do it. Your uh, xylophones are pretty cool, too. What? Xylophones? These are Glockens fields. That we have. Oh, Glockens. I get it now. I am so outraged over you. I think we shall vogging, do a mugging on do. Trick him. Yeah, yeah. A mugging, eh? All right, give me your wallets. What? I thought it was be vice versa. You give us a wallet? My, my wallet? Why would I give you my wallet when you're the one who were, was insulted? That makes much more lot sense. Very good, here's my wallet. You gain four meat. And I have a Glockenbrot. You gain an item, Glockenbrot. A small loaf of dark bread? Ah. Uh, I hope they're not bad at baking. Great, fine mugging all around. Well done. Y'all shake hands and the goblins stroll away happily, <laughs> playing sp sprightly jingly music on their Glockenspiels. Nice! Alright, now yeah, let's head to the. Let's find out about our ownership of the speakeasy. Oh, and we can translate the message on the streets. What does this say? Some hobo code on the sidewalk here. Translate it. The code reads Sandwich April 18th, 1858. Huh? What's that all about? 58. You find something interesting. 
A flattened sandwich has been carefully concealed in the folder to that date. So that's what the code was all about. You got an item. Pressed ham panini. You're not exactly sure where this meat came from, but it, if pressed, you'd say a pig. It, I can eat this? It increases your physical armor by three until you eat something else. That's enough research. Yeah, I mean, um, wow. That's insane. What? Okay, let's head into the alley. Ah, uh, speak easy, friend. Yeah, speak easy. Hey, OB, everything all right? Everything's copacetic, co 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 bud. Yourself? Say, OB, do you know anything about hobo code? Sure, bud, I know Glyph or two. Pulls a scrawl, a scrap of paper out of his hobo case and shows you a few symbols you hadn't seen before. Hobo code knowledge increased as well, thanks. Shoot the breeze. Are you from Ocean City originally, Obi? Nah, I was born in upstate New York. What town? You wouldn't have heard of it. Nowheresville, man. I split that scene as soon as I was old enough to stick out my, th my thumb. Doesn't sound like you miss it much. What's to miss? I got the whole world stretched out in front of me. Uh, flap your gums a bit more. So why an oboe? Why not, I don't know, a saxophone? The sax is a righteous instrument, but there's something special about the tone and trill of an oboe. It's like a ray of sunshine coming down from heaven. Wow. Also, it breaks down into a case that the size of a library book. You ever try to carry a saxophone in a bindle? It's been a while since I was in Ocean City. I don't remember it being so run down. Yeah, this old town, she's having some rough times. What happened? Beats me. I ain't hip to local politics. Tell you one thing, though. Ain't a good sign when the city park's gotta hire a random fella off the street to do security guard work. Yeah, no kidding. Um, how's the whole life treating you? Well, I won't say I got no complaints, but there's never a dull moment. Why, you thinking of joining up? Considering all my luggage burned up in a mysterious fire and I'm sleeping in the back room of a shady antique store, I kind of feel like I already have. Well, heck, we'll have you riding the rails in no time. Do you spend a lot of time in Ocean City? It's a major rail hub, so yeah, I find myself back here on the regular. Been all up and down this coast a bunch of times, so... As far north as the Windy City. Only that far? Why not all the way to Frisco? It's a long trip, and I'm not much excited about crossing the desert. It seems like a real hassle, but I'll get to it one of these days. Once I figure I've seen everything there is to see on this end of the country. Alright. I'm gonna stop talking with you for now. We gotta talk about this. They're owning this place with this gentleman. Hey, it's you again. Find Oliver? Uh, yes. Hmm. I don't like the sound of that. Oliver is gone. The handoff went extremely bad. Badly? Yeah. That too. Uh. You go over the events at the fridge factory. Fancy Dan makes. A variety of faces at various points in your story because Fancy Dan is a good lance. Show him the deed. Oliver was carrying this deed with him. And skims the deed. Hmm. It says here that ownership of the speakeasy is automatically transferred to whoever has physical possession of this deed. Huh? Is that legal? None of this is elite. None of this is legal. Oh, yeah. I guess you're my new boss, baby. Let's have one drink to mourn the old boss and another one to celebrate the new one. To sue, Dan. I guess we ought to change the name since, well, Oliver's Place is no longer Oliver's Place. I suppose that's right. Got any ideas? Well, you could go traditional and just call it Micmac's Place. Or something hip like the Purple Door. Or something incisive and avant-garde like, I don't know, Noblesse Oblige. Oblige. Purple Door? I want to name it something else. Uh, the, 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 uh, Music Hideaway. Or, oh, we'll just call it Music Hideaway. No, the Music Hideaway? The. The Hideaway. Just the Hideaway. Uh, but I want music to be. Just the Hideaway is fine. Actually, that stuff's perfect. The Hideaway. I like it. Now to business. To business! We make the beer in-house, so that's safe. But we're out of everything else, and based on your story, I'd say the stuff at the factory isn't safe to use. Yeah. If you can find booze or mixers or garnishes, bring it back here. Any idea where to get started with that? 
No, we might get, might want to check with Barnaby. Barnaby? Dan points at the milky-eyed sod at the table by the wall. He doesn't see very well, but he's got a nose for news and a sixth sense for booze. He'll be able to hook us up. All right. Well, now I'll have a beer. Appreciate it. Now I got a beer buzz. Nice. Barnaby! Buy you a drink. Um, buy him another one. For a few moments, he closes his throat and speaks. The lake is deep enough to drown dreams, but not the sins of the grandfather. All right. That's it? I just... Okay. I thought... I thought he was... I don't know. Where can I find booze? The fridge factory? No, not the fish. Oh. Alright, we better end this episode soon. Uh, we're gonna fight them. Oh, the ring of repulsion shield. Oh, dude, look how sick my cello is. Oh, alright. Combat. Go. Bam. Toot at him. Oh, he does hot damage. That's hot. Just smack this. these fish. They're nothing. They're nobodies. Uh, Jasper's getting stronger. You got a fish throwing spear? Oh, interesting. Well, let's go quickly check out the, uh, just sit and see if there's any beer around. Otherwise, we'll head to sleep um, and then maybe head into the next episode. Yeah, there's nothing here, right? Maybe, oh, well, didn't I have the ability to... No, can't open that. I guess that's it. Let's head uh, to sleep. Wait, what's... Oh, tentacles? Yeah, let's fight some tentacles real quick. Bam, smack. I should probably be... Uh, for some reason, that seems to end my turn every time. So I gotta... Ooh, that's a lot of damage. All right. Okay, so... How much of this do I have? Boom. I wish I could see how much AP. I'm trying to figure that out. You have no AP. Oh, so I get one weapon attack in a certain way. Okay, so I figured out how it works. Ah, okay. So you get, a, like, a couple AP, and then you get the, um, the weapon. Makes sense. All right, tentacles defeated. Now we must go to... Back to the Marais Antiques. Hey, McMac, before you go to bed, I need you to approve a new tenant for the storefront next door. What? Why is that up to me? Earl shrugs. Somebody's got to do it. There's three applicants for the place. Okay, what are they? First applicant is La Table Enchante. It's like a high-end kitchen store. Magical utensils and the like. The second is a Jardware's Hardware. I guess if your name is Hardware, your options for rhyming business names are pretty limited. And the last applicant is Trutchens and Bludgeons. This fellow is really excited about weaponry. Ah. We could use a hardware store, a kitchen place, or a weapon store. Well, we have a wep we already have a weapon enthusiast on the street. We could use a hardware store? Yeah, I need gadgets. Okay, I'll get them moved in and get the next storefront ready for applicants. Thanks, Charles. Going to sleep. Uh, and that ends such a day in the game and this episode so we'll see you all in the next one for part five of the series until then peace <laughs>